Facebook. Okay, we're good to go. So, welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I am your host, Carlin Clark, and I will be talking to you today about essential oils, dangers, and precautions. Um, this is a really great topic to have, especially if you're really new to oils and you're not really sure what you're doing yet. So we'll cover a lot of information about what kind of dosing, how, you know, how to do topical, aromatic, internal, that kind of thing, and how it's appropriate. So um, we have a lot of information to cover. As I go, um, I'm going to have my little window over here for those of you on Facebook with me. So give me some thumbs up if you hear and are, you know, have questions type them in the comments area. I will see those and address them as they come in. Um, let's see, then we have, let's get into our PowerPoint here. So, let me screen share. Hang on a sec. Screen sharing. Okay, now you can hopefully see that. Let me start my slideshow. There we go. Okay, essential oils, dangers and precautions. And nearly there. Hold on, I've got to set up my notes so I can see what I'm saying. Let me put that here. Okay, so can you see my PowerPoint? Okay, it looks like you can do that, so good. Okay, we're just gonna wait for a live feed to catch up to us here. <laughs> it's really good technology is great when it works right <laughs> okay we need to bring that to the front how are you telling me to do that resume share okay apparently i stopped the share i didn't realize i was doing that all right let me try this one more time for whatever reason it was not sharing Okay, now we can see that, right? Okay, thumbs up. There we go. Okay, we're good to go. Excellent, that only took a couple minutes. <laughs> okay, as we get into this class, again, if you have any questions as we go, just you know, comment in the, in the comments here and I will get to those. So what we're gonna do first is just a little, um, introduction, maybe a quick review for those of you who are not familiar with essential oils yet or are still kind of new to the concept of using essential oils. So we have um, just a little welcome. Okay, let me get on. A little bit about me. Um, again, my name is Carlin Clark. I am from Provo, Utah. I grew up here, sort of. I lived in Louisiana for 10 years. I have uh, an aviation... Oops, I just dropped my roller bottle. <laughs> um, I grew up in the aviation industry and I work as a, a adjunct professor at the college teaching aviation science and I have an autistic son who is the reason why I got into essential oils in the first place and he's caused me to do lots of research and find out what works well for him and uh, we have been really successful being able to implement a behavior management system using essential oils and uh, I can you know easily say that over the course, we've been doing this for about seven years now, or going on seven years. And these essential oils work the same way since they did the first day we tried them. And they're just amazing. We don't know what we would do without them. And uh, we no longer have massive aggressions. We no longer have aggressions, period. And we just have uh, almost some normalcy in our family, even though we live with disability. So um, we're really, really excited about what essential oils offer people in and are grateful to be able to share the concepts and the um, kind of like the rules of how to use essential oils safely and effectively. So just a quick recap, what are essential oils? If you've ever enjoyed the scent of a rose or if you experienced the aromatic qualities of um, oranges or things like that and you kind of squeeze them and it squirts out those little, you know, little squirts, those are the aromatic qualities of essential oils. So there are naturally occurring volatile aromatic compounds that are found in the seeds, bark, stems, roots, flowers, even other parts of the plant. And they can be, you know, both beautifully and powerfully fragrant. Um, essential oils give plants their distinctive smells. They protect the plant. 
Um, they're part of that plant's defense mechanism and they play a, a role in the plant pollination as well. Um, in addition to their intrinsic benefits to plants and being beautifully fragrant to us, um, essential oils have been used for uh, food preparation, beauty treatments, and healthcare practices across the world over hundreds and hundreds of years. So they're not a new concept. They're, they're an old, renewed concept. Hmm. Um, so just out of curiosity, what type of scent are you the most drawn to? Citrus, grasses, florals, spices, mint, or tree smells? Curious to know about that. You can answer that in the comments. Essential oils, why do we use essential oils? They've been used for thousands of years, like we said. Uh, when you choose our oils, you're choosing essential oils gently and carefully distilled from plants that have been patiently harvested at the perfect moment by experienced growers from around the world for ideal extract composition and efficacy. Uh, experienced essential oil users will immediately recognize the superior quality standard um, for natural, safe, purely effective, effective excuse me, purely effective essential oils. They provide health conscious individuals with a safe and natural alternative. Um, they're used for a wide range of emotional and physical wellness applications. And then um, they have few, if any, undesirable side effects when they're used as they're directed. One drop is really all that's needed to be um, effective to achieve a powerful benefit. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, how many drops do you think are in a 15 ml bottle of essential oil? That's one that looks like this, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later on because it's kind of a um, copaiba oil or cobaiba, however, depending on where you're from, <laughs> I guess how you pronounce it, has some really powerful benefits. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the PowerPoint here. But how many drops do you think are in this bottle? Obviously, I've used some, but you can kind of see. That's a lot. So if you can guess that, you might get a free bottle. Okay, number next here, we have some general uses of essential oils. They're great for everyday use. You can use the many um, benefits of them to support your overall health. There's basically three ways that we use them. The first is aromatic. Um, essential oils, when they're diffused or inhaled, can be really stimulating, calming, or even soothing and essential oils diffusing uh, can also cleanse and purify the air that we breathe. Topically, essential oils can be safely applied for massage or topical therapy. We, sometimes we use it to, to be more targeted in our, our approach to um, trying to find relief or support in certain areas. For example, if I have a, a sore knee, I might put some essential oil on my knee to support that aches and pains that I feel. Ta uh, let's see what else. Ta um, their chemical structure enables them to pass through the skin uh, for an immediate systemic response. So that's an amazing benefit that we get. Internally, they have a rich culinary history, obviously. We've talked about that. And they can be used as dietary supplements or, again, for targeted wellness. So given the three ways that we use essential oils, which way do you think that you would use oils the most, aromatic, topical, or internal? It's hard to choose, right? I find them there, there's an application for each for each way. Well, let's talk about a little bit of these dangers and precautions that we need to take when we're using essential oils. Um, essential oils are amazing and they're wonderful tools for any of us to use to support ourselves emotionally, physically in our homes and with our families. They are good, healthy and helpful, useful gifts from God, gifts of the earth. However, they're also very potent and they're volatile aromatic compounds and they deserve respect in their use. Using them is not complicated, but there are some significant guidelines and tips that we need to implement to help maximize the benefits of the essential oils that they offer. And to, uh, to avoid the very real dangers that can accompany misuse of anything. Most importantly, remember less is more and consistency is vital to the success, okay? So less is more and consistency is needed. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to discuss why choosing a company that produces pure essential oils is so important. We'll also cover dangers and precautions you should know about concerning aromatic, topical, and uh, internal use, as well as how to dilute, when to use orally, and some ideal and maximum guidelines for use, even photosensitivity, how to use oils safely for pregnancy and with your pets. It's important to learn these guidelines because it's you know, overwhelming the body with too much essential oil can sometimes lead to unwanted outcomes. 
This is because cells in the body utilize complex chemical reactions uh, to metabolize the cells. And it's never appropriate to exceed the metabolic capacity of the cells. So what makes our company different? Um, our companies, you know, doTERRA oils, we're committed to providing the purest essential oils possible. Our mission hinges on discovering and developing the world's highest quality therapeutic grade essential oils relate and related natural wellness products. We accomplish this with a strong team of in-house scientists, as well as highly accomplished scientific and medical advisors. We also stay at the forefront of scientific advances by partnering with selected academic industry and medical institutions. When you see our company label, you can be confident that you're using a pure quality essential oil with the highest standards and with rigorous testing. This ensures that your bottle of essential oil contains no fillers, additives, or synthetics. Synthetics, especially when they're unknown, can cause adverse reactions and complications for the user. Um, but our company has gone above and beyond um, by developing a website where you can enter the batch number um, on the bottom of your essential oil bottle to see results from the testing yourself. And that looks a little bit like this, if you can see that. So you can enter that into that website and I'll post that uh, below after the webinar. We hold our integrity to the highest standard and we offer transparency so that you can use these oils with confidence knowing that they're safe and they're pure. You don't have to take our word for it. You can see it for yourself because our company doesn't merely just tell about our quality, they show it and they prove it. So what about diffusing? So diffusing is one of my favorite ways to use our oils. We love the aromatic quality of these essential oils. And when you combine your diffuser blends, it's so amazing the response and the effect that it leaves on the body. So essential oils, when they're diffused or when they're inhaled, can be really stimulating or they can be calming or even soothing. And sometimes it does that at the same time. Oils are chemically geared to balance the body. So if you have, uh, if you need stimulation or if you need calming, it will, it will um, adapt in your body to what is going to bring you the most balance. Essential oils um, can cleanse and purify the air. There are various options um, that are safe for aromatic use. So one of the simplest methods for using essential oils aromatically is using a diffuser. So something like you can see my little one here. This is my desk diffuser, so simple. It's just a little one. It lasts for about three hours. And I just fill it up with a little bit of water, put my oils, oils in there, screw the top back on, and then I can let it go. And we will push it. And then it starts to puff out. Kind of like, um, there you go, can you see that? Kind of like a humidifier or a nebulizer, right? So diffusers that use cold air or water are the most ideal they tend to spread the oils through the air really effectively. Um, you can also put a drop of oil in your hand, or um, we like to do it this way. So you put the oil in your hand like this, then you rub your hands together, kind of spread the oil around, and then you're gonna cup it over your nose and mouth and breathe deeply, like this. Okay, and you can say that, you know, I'm closing my eyes for a reason because some of the oils have some of them, you know, <laughs> like peppermint oil has the menthol. It's going to get right into your eyes and create some, <laughs> some mist for your eyes, right? Okay, this is a wonderful way to use kind of like your own personal diffuser with your hands. You're still getting those aromatic compounds into the body. Really, really effective. There's other ways you can do it. You can put a couple drops of oil on a cotton ball and then put the cotton balls in an air vent and it will mist through the air or diffuse through the air. You can mist it over a carpet. Like if you have a, a glass spray bottle, you can spray a couple of, um, like we do maybe four or five drops of oil, maybe 10 drops of oil in a, a bottle, glass bottle about this big, fill it with water, shake it and spray. And that will mist over the furniture, carpet or linens, just create a nice uh, aroma. And a, and a clean aroma, it kind of sanitizes as you do that. You can add oil to your laundry or to dryer balls. You can put them in your household surface cleaners. One of the things I love to do is with that glass spray bottle, put a few drops of citrus oil and then I spray down my kitchen countertops and clean them that way. And I know that that's, you know, um, the antibacterial effect and the, you know, that type of thing is gonna clean and sanitize and purify that area. You can um, just, you know, old school, <laughs> just, you know, I just, you know, don't know what else to do. Just open the bottle and, and take a smell, right? 
um, uncap it and inhale directly from the bottle. You can wear diffuser jewelry. A lot of people have um, lava rocks jewelry or clay pendants and they can put drops of oil on those and wear those and have it close to you. Um, or you can use uh, an inhaler, an essential oil inhaler. If you choose to use or to diffuse your essential oils, use caution when you're diffusing cassia or cinnamon bark because they're potent. They're really strong, hot oils. So if you get your nose too close to the diffuser, it might kind of like burn your nose a little bit. So keep your distance nose wise over the, over the mist. Um, aromatically, essential oils are very safe and generally it's well tolerated by everybody. However, it's important to use this application appropriately use smaller doses, um, do it multiple times throughout the day to achieve the maximum benefits. So one of the things I like to do is I turn the diffuser on and I use the intermittent cycle on my diffuser. So it puffs for a minute and then it goes off for a minute or a couple of minutes back and forth. And I do that throughout the day as I need it. Um, the amount of oil diffused, the proximity to the diffuser and the room size are gonna determine the necessary diffusing time um, uh, length you know, for how long you're going to diffuse it. So if you're in a smaller room, you don't really need as long or as much oil. In a larger room, you're gonna have a couple more drops extra or you're gonna have it diffuse it for a little bit longer period. And the more oil you diffuse and the closer proximity, the more it's gonna give you a potent effect. If you're using a water-based diffuser, generally it's recommended to use one to five drops of oil per diffusion period. Um, it would be best to start with a short diffusion period, like 15 to 20 minutes, and then increase the time as is needed to achieve the desired benefit. So it's really going to depend on what you're diffusing for. So if you are suffering from a, a cold or cough or something like that, and you want to use your diffuser to support your uh, process of uh, getting over that cold or flu symptoms, your um, time to diffuse might be more consistent throughout the day or more regular through the day than if you were just wanting to have a, a, a pick-me-up effect or like a study session or something like that where you just need it for a couple of hours. Um, if you have excessive diffusion, which can happen, you might feel some symptoms like headache or lightheadedness, nausea, or even a little bit of confusion. This is rare, but it can happen. If you get a reaction like that, then you just know that you're diffusing too much uh, in too close of a proximity and you need to air out the room. So if you can't leave the room, um, you can open a window or an air vent um, if you need to seek med medical attention, if the sensitivity is severe or prolonged uh, or breathing becomes difficult. Again, that's a rare reaction. I actually haven't heard of anybody having that reaction with an essential oil, but we do teach people to use them appropriately. So um, some precautions when you're diluting. Um, we talk about diluting essential oils, and that is a very necessary um, tactic for using your oils appropriately. There's two types of, or two terms that you're going to want to know when you're applying your essential oils topically. There's dilution, and then there's neat. And you've probably heard these terms before, but I'll just go into them briefly just so you know uh, exactly what we're talking about. Neat refers to the application of essential oils straight from the bottle with no dilution. That means I'm going to just take the bottle like I did, I'm gonna put the drop in my hand uh, and I'm not adding anything to it, it's just the drop of oil, right? That's neat. Um, they can be applied topically without dilution because they're exceptionally mild chemistry. So oils that are classified as neat. These would include things like frankincense, lavender, melaleuca, melissa, or even sandalwood are really good to use neat. Dilution is a process where essential oils are mixed with a carrier oil. Often we use fractionated coconut oil because it's, it's, it's just really nice <laughs> to use. It's one of the best oils to use to dilute the essential oil, but you can use anything. You can use a vegetable oil, you can use your olive oil, you can use you know, just about anything. Um, anything, um, anything that's going to dilute the oil is gonna help the essential oil carry into the skin nicely. So there's benefits to diluting essential oils. The most important aspect of the topical application is the dilution. It's also one of the most understood. So um, when you're using it properly, carrier oils have been shown to actually improve the essential oil topical application uh, through different pathways. Evaporation is the primary issue in the topical application as the body heat and the skin present a formidable barrier. One of the most important benefits of dilution is that it, um, it slows the flash off of the volatile aromatic compounds. This means 
that the amount of essential oil that you lose to the air is minimized and the rate of evaporation is reduced. So just putting it onto your skin, there is an evaporation or a flash off effect that happens. So diluting that oil actually um, helps um, it apply more essentially, or excuse me, more efficiently um, when you're doing it uh, versus neat. So diluting essential oils can reduce the risk of sensitivity as well. It's advisable to use, again, a carrier oil. And again, we recommend the fractionated coconut oil. It's the nicest and easiest um, it, to, um, to create a dilution for the more potent oils. Um, when you're trying an oil for the first time, um, the recommended dilution ratio is typically one drop of essential oil to three drops of carrier oil. So we recommend you give it a try first, see how your skin's gonna react to it. Um, and again, with our oils, because they are pure and potent and they're tested uh, vigorously, um, we don't have a lot of reports of reactions. So this is just, we're going on the safe side here. Some of the other popular carrier oils can be um, just like a virgin coconut oil, almond oil, jojoba, grapeseed, or even avocado, and again, even olive oil. Um, again, our, our choice is fractionated coconut oil because it has a long shelf life, it's odorless, um, and it allows the oil to stay in its liquid form. So it's, it's great to add to uh, any of your future orders. Um, some great ways to dilute your essential oils can be with roller bottles. So I have a couple things like these are things I make myself. I put um, whatever oils I want to put in here to mix. And then I just fill it up, you know, maybe about to, oh, about 10 drops, five to 10 drops of each oil that I'm using. And then I fill the rest up with coconut oil. Um, and that creates a good, a safe, convenient, you know, roll it on, safe topical application. Um, you can add three to five drops of the unscented spa or hand body lotion um, also to spread it around. Um, I know my husband does that a lot with the deep blue over his knees before he goes to play soccer. He'll put deep blue oil on and then he'll put lotion over the top and kind of spread that around. Um, we have also pre-diluted oils. So all of these oils, I'll say here, are these, the ones that look like this. So the peppermint and the roll-on, this is pre-diluted. And then we have, you know, rose oil is pre-diluted. Uh, we have the whole line of um, the family kit. The family essentials comes in a pre-diluted roller and they're, they're specifically diluted. So it's not just a random fill them with coconut oil. There's, uh, the ratio is very specific. So it's for the most efficient or efficacious blend there. Um, we also have all of our aromatherapy lines. So our like our passion oil also, this is a great one that's pre-diluted. I love these so much because they are so great just to use for your perfume. I'll put them on just on my perfume points on my wrists and my, my ears. And then I get, you know, kind of rub it in a little bit, but it still has that beautiful smell, but it's, you know, it's um, safe and it's um, really good for the sensitivity of the skin as well. So thinking about that, how would you like to dilute your essential oils or how do you think you would do that? Let's look at some dilution ratios. So understanding why we want to dilute the oils, let's um, look at the ratios. Okay, first of all, we need to note that these are just guidelines. So every person is chemically different. This means that some people may be more sensitive than others. Some need to dilute, dilute more. Some will be fine diluting less. Remember what we discussed in the last step, because every individual is unique. The dose is going to vary based on size, age, and your overall health status. So for a baby, the general use, um, general guidelines are to use one to two drops per four teaspoons of carrier oil. So if you're making a, one of these roller bottles, one of these, you're going to put one drop, one drop of oil and fill the rest with coconut, fractionated coconut oil. That's for an infant, for a baby. If you are using it with children, um, basically newborn to six months, one drop again with four teaspoons of carrier. Six months to two years is going to be one drop with two teaspoons of carrier oil. Um, two to five years, one drop of essential oil with one teaspoon of carrier oil. Five to 10 years, one to two drops with one teaspoon. 10 to 18 years is one to five drops with one teaspoon of carrier oil. And I will post these in, you know, underneath the, the webinar post once we um, complete the webinar. So you have that reference. 
When you're creating your own roller blends to use with your children, um, you can use some of these ratios as well. So under two years, you can fill, fill the roller bottle half, quarter of the way with essential oils and then top off with carrier oil. Two to six years, you can fill it a third of the way and six years up, you can fill it halfway up and then fill the rest with carrier oil. So it works out about the same. Um, with each use of essential oils on a child, stay within the one to two drops every four hours as an ideal amount. With three to 12 drops in a 24 hour period, uh, use that as a guideline for a maximum topical application. For adults, you can dilute as needed using three to six drops per use as the ideal amount with a maximum of 12 to 36 drops in a 24 hour period. For those with sensitive skin or fragile skin like elderly or young children, use the guidelines for a child to start and then you can adjust it from there. Also, um, it's important to be aware of one's unique health circumstances and adjust accordingly. So one tip to remember is that we should be more moderate with our essential oil when, we're, um, when our health is compromised in some way. Okay, hot and sensitive oils. Some oils are considered to be hot oils since they have a potent chemistry and should always be diluted with the carrier oil before every use when applied topically. This would include uh, oils of lemongrass, cassia, cinnamon, oregano, thyme, clove, basil, white fir, and wintergreen. These oils can feel like they're burning if you don't um, put that because they have that chemistry. So consider you know, diluting those when you're applying them topically. Um, they can, they have a warming sensation, like I said, they can, <laughs> a lot of people think they're spicy. <laughs> um, if you take them internally, they can definitely feel spicy hot. So you might want to uh, encapsulate those. Um, sensitive oils are essential oils that should be diluted before use on young or sensitive skin. These oils are like bergamot, black pepper, peppermint, eucalyptus, and ginger. They have kind of a tingly effect and it can feel hot even though it's not the same warming or spicy hot. So use the previous guidelines when you are diluting those. So the ratios on babies, young children, the elderly, and just general sensitive skin. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about the sensitivity. Um, essential oils are composed of about, what, only 100% volatile aromatic compounds. They don't contain any protein molecules and so they can't really cause true allergic reactions. However, everyone has different sensitivity thresholds. So essential oils can cause sensitivity reactions in some people, but often these sensitivities produce symptoms similar to allergic reactions. So there is some confusion there. So you can feel rested, <laughs> rest assured and feel safe that if you have sensitivity reaction, it's not an allergic reaction, it's a sensitivity reaction. Um, again, there's no proteins in the compounds. So. The signs and symptoms of sensitivity look like pain or swelling or tenderness of the skin. This can happen like if you put oregano straight on your skin, neat, and it's hot, and your skin goes, that's hot oil, and the chemical compounds of that oil make it warming, right? So it's going to kind of create that symptom. So be smart, dilute the hot oils. Um, other signs and symptoms of sensitivity could be itchiness, um, tenderness of the skin, hives or rashes or boils, sense of uh, say digestive upset or even sometimes difficulty breathing so if you find you're sensitive to a particular oil there's a couple things that you can do um, first because the sensitivities are not true allergic reactions other application methods can still be tolerated even if you exhibit sensitivity to one particular method so for example um, we'll take the oregano again oregano so if i'm sensitive to it putting on my skin even if it's diluted and it's still causing some sensitivity I still might be able to put it internally or put it in the diffuser and still benefit from that oil. Um, okay, so if you exhibit symptoms after using an oil topically, you could alternatively use the oil internally or aromatically, as I said. Um, another option is to dilute it with the vegetable carrier oil or, um, or you know, adjust the dosage maybe. <laughs> Here's one example. So lavender oil is a really, calm, soothing, you know, basic oil. Most people have no issues with lavender, um, but I find I'm really sensitive to it and not in the sense that my skin starts to boil, but I find that if I use too many drops of lavender, it will wake me up and make me feel like I'm bouncing off the walls, it has the adverse reaction <laughs> than, than the soothing, sleepy, calming part. 
So I have to adjust my dosage of lavender oil to either diluting it or I just put like maybe even half of a drop, not even a full drop on the bottom of my feet. And that's all that I can tolerate in order to get that soothing, calming benefit. Um, okay, so one of the many benefits that essential oils have is that they share a lot of common properties. Um, they might not induce the same sensitive reaction. If you have experienced sensitivity in the past, always use a smaller dose and dilute the oil that you're trying for the first time. See how that works for you. If it doesn't, then there's, we have other oils that can um, overlap the same benefits. Although sensitive reactions are rare, it's recommended to conduct a skin test before beginning a topical use of essential oil. So if you, you know, kind of like doing a hair color test, do a skin test. <laughs> you can do this by mixing a small amount of essential oils, a couple drops to three to six drops of carrier oil that you've previously used successfully. Um, apply this to an area of the skin, like your abdomen or your thigh or your inner arm, and just allow the essential oil to absorb completely and then check the area a couple times over the next few hours. If you see any redness or pain or itchiness or swelling or other adverse symptoms, um, you can have uh, maybe a sensitivity to that oil. So it would be best to either avoid the topical use of it or use a further dilution. And remember, unlike true allergic responses, which cause symptoms no matter the application method, having a topical sensitivity does not mean that you're sensitive to all application methods. So internal and ar aromatic use can still be tried by those who have topical sensitivities. If the reaction occurs on the skin, discontinue the use immediately. The irritated area can be sued with the vegetable oil or fractionated coconut oil. You could just gently wipe the area with a soft cloth to dry out and remove as much essential oil as possible. Remember, never, never use water. Water will drive essential oil in and it generally makes the effect stronger. So water is, is, is out. So don't, don't try to wash your hands or wash the area. Just grab an, a, a carrier oil. Grab your fractionated coconut oil or your olive oil and use that to cleanse the area and, and dilute it. The skin will need time to calm down, which is going to take maybe hours or sometimes days or even weeks, depending on the severity of your skin's, your body's sensitivity response. And of course, the amount of oil that you used. So seek immediate attention, uh, medical attention if the sensitivity reaction is severe or it worsens over time. There's uh, photosensitivity dangers. We talk a little bit about photosensitive oils, which are typically the citrus oils, but there's a few others that um, have the citrus in it or have that same chemical uh, quality. The photosensitization is the process by which the ultraviolet radiation combines with a particular substance and then causes a chemical or biological changes. It's like the sunburn. It's the sunburn effect. It's UV rays affecting and it, um, it like increases the, the rapid rate of sunburn. Citrus oils uh, contain photosensitive compound, let's see if I can pronounce it, it's called <laughs> furocumarins. And it's important to avoid exposure to sunlight, sun lamps, or other sources of UV light for 12 hours after the topical application of a citrus oil. So don't go tanning in the tanning bed after you've put on citrus bliss or wild orange or something like that because you wanted to smell it. It will create a burn. So some oils with photosensitivity include our massage blend, the bergamot, the respiratory blend, the invigorating blend, cumin, Joyful blend, grapefruit focus blend, uh, the lemon or the lime oils, kumquat, protective blend, cleansing blend, metabolic blend, and tangerine. Also wild orange, the detoxification blend, the uplifting blend, our encouraging blend, and even our renewing blend. So if these are oils that you like to use on a day where you're going to be outside or exposed make sure that you apply this oil in areas where the sun's not going to shine. <laughs> so maybe on the abdomen or under the, you know, under the clothes. Your skin can burn or blister when these, and the, these oils and the sun mix. So be very careful when going outside using photosensitive oils. Sensitive areas. So how many of you have had the unfortunate experience of, of um, feeling the effects of oils in sensitive areas? So it's really important that we avoid those sensitive areas. So don't apply oils in the eyes or the nose or in the ears. 
apply a carrier oil if your body accidentally contacts an essential oil in one of these areas. It's also important to remember that essential oils are really potent and the effect can linger on the hands or fingers after topical application. For example, if you put peppermint oil on your forehead for a headache or something like that, for example, to support that, that need, um, you will have peppermint on your fingers. Now, if you, even if you wash your hands and then go to the bathroom, you're still gonna have lingering peppermint oil on your hands. So if you don't want to have an unpleasant experience in the bathroom, then you need to um, use a carrier oil to wash your hands with and dilute that peppermint oil before washing them and then going to the bathroom. So just a little FYI, I've heard several stories of people that have had some interesting um, experiences <laughs> from, from making that mistake. So um, avoid rubbing or touching your face and your eyes after applying oils, especially when we're doing it with children. So even the diluted peppermint oil, you know, like the, the roll-on, you know, children's roll-on here, even applying that like um, to them, they might rub their hands and you have to watch them to make sure they're not getting it in their eyes or other sensitive areas. Um, so some places to avoid. Facial areas like the skin around your eyes, it's really sensitive there, especially if you're using some of those um, tingly oils like the peppermint or the past tense um, that can create some, um, some fumes, I guess, fumes that get to your eyes and this will make you cry. Um, keep them away from your eyes and inside your ears. Don't put them inside your nose. You can put them over your nose and over your sinuses area for support there, but don't get them inside the nose. Um, and you don't want to get them around broken or damaged or otherwise injured skin. If the reaction occurs in the eye, immediately rinse the eye with vegetable oil, not water, like the coconut oil. If, um, if that's not available, use milk. Uh, milk is a great alternative. You want the fat milk, so whole milk or whatever. Skim milk is not going to do a great job. Um, because essential oils are not water soluble, water is never going to be effective at removing the essential oil as a lipid containing substance. So the eye should be flushed multiple times until the irritation ceases. And then seek medical attention from a trained professional to ensure that there's no long term damage occurred. Okay, internally, this is uh, one of my favorite ways to use our oils. I love, love, love that our company can guarantee the safety of the use of these oils internally. Okay, oils have been used throughout the centuries for, you know, they have a rich culinary history. They've been used as dietary supplements. They do a lot uh, for supporting their, uh, a variety of our health conditions. When you sprinkle cinnamon on your oatmeal, for example, or sip a mug of peppermint tea, or add fresh basil leaves to your spaghetti, you're actually consuming some of those volatile aromatic compounds from the essential oils. Um, the oils contribute to many health benefits like the, you know, as well as flavoring or aroma properties, um, when they're in their concentrated form in these bottles, they can be used as dietary supplements for a more targeted or more potent health benefit. Internal use is very safe and it's an effective method of application because of the sophisticated physiological processes of our own bodies. And again, I can say that because of the company that, I, that we use. I can't say that for every company. But when our oils are ingested, they enter directly into the bloodstream. Um, they go through the gastrointestinal tract where they're so transported throughout the rest of the body. The oils are lipid soluble, so they're readily transported to all the organs of the body, including the brain. Then like all the things that we consume, essential oils are metabolized by the liver and other organs, and then they're excreted. The composition of the oils is highly complex each constituent possesses a unique set of biochemical um, properties that react with cells and organs in different ways. So even although we have the mechanisms of these actions, they're not completely understood. The positive end results have been demonstrated time and time again. However, the body is only equipped to handle appropriate doses of essential oils. So it's really important that we follow proper dosing. Um, proper dosing according to labeling recommendations and other professional guidelines should be strictly followed to avoid toxicity. It is important to know that you are using pure essential oils with no additives or fillers. Effective methods of internal application 
can be for you know like using in recipes for cooking or baking to replace fresh or dried herbs or spices remember oils are much more potent than the dried versions of herbs and spices so start with a really small amount sometimes that means a dipping a toothpick in the bottle and then stirring the toothpick into the sauce rather than dropping a whole drop of oil <laughs> um, you can add um, essential oils to water, smoothies, milk, or tea, or other drinks. One of my favorites is peppermint tea or chamomile tea. tea. And I will put a, just one drop into a mug of hot water with some sweetener, stir that around, and it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful benefit, wonderful experience. You can also take internal, um, take your oils internally by using a veggie capsule. You can add a couple of drops to applesauce or yogurt. One of the things I do with my autistic son every day is we put oils in his green smoothie and he drinks it. <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't necessarily taste awesome, but he drinks it. And so he gets that wonderful benefit of getting those um, compounds in his body. Um, okay, let's look at maybe some ideal amounts for internal use. Okay, so what, like we talked about the topical use, there's safety guidelines in place for using oils internally. So any oil that you take in a soft gel or in a capsule um, will fall in the internal category, anything that's gonna be swallowed. For children, one to two drops per use every four hours is the ideal amount, with three to 12 drops being the maximum in a 24 hour period. For adults, we're gonna use two to four drops every four hours for the ideal amount, with 12 to 24 as the maximum in a 24 hour period. There is um, another thing to consider with internal application and that's the, the oral use. So um, oral use means any oil taken in water or liquid or under the tongue. And these guidelines are for adults only. One to three drops every four hours is the ideal amount. Four to 18 drops is the maximum in a 24 hour period. Again, that's under the tongue um, or drinking in the water. A lower daily dose is recommended for extended internal use. If a higher dose is desired, it should be taken only under the observation of a physician to ensure that there's no harm occurring. If for some reason you use more than is recommended, immediately discontinue the use. If a large amount of oil was consumed, contact poison control immediately. Let them know what's going on. If only a small amount was consumed, drink plenty of fluids, preferably milk or other fat containing drinks to minimize the upset. Um, seek medical attention if the reaction is severe or prolonged. So, one of those guidelines could be something like drinking peppermint alone on an empty stomach or a digestion or something like that that's going to be good for the digestive tract. But also, if you have an empty stomach, just like taking a medication might be disturbing um, the stomach, don't they tell you not to take it on an empty stomach? It's the same thing applies. So just, you know, put some food or some milky yeah. substance or some cheese in your stomach and it should be fine. All right, what about, I get this question a lot. Um, can I put my essential oils in my plastic water bottle? So let's talk about that. Um, some people are very particular about that. We're gonna look at BPA free and things like that. So um, whether to use glass or plastic or you know, how to store your oils or drinking, uh, you know, for drinking the essential oils. There's many varieties of plastics available. So um, some are more impervious to essential oils than others. However, not all are equally fragile and not all essential oils affect plastic the same way. Citrus oils have that chemical composition known to interfere with the chemistry of plastics. They tend to break the plastics down. It's petrochemicals. We like that about the citrus oils. It's, that's one of the reasons why we take that in our bodies. We want to have that breakdown of petrochemicals that are ingested. Um, if you're using a citrus oil, you might consider just using glass bottles only to prevent that breakdown or ingesting that breakdown. Um, yeah. Characteristically, there's HDPE plastic as well as plastics number one, which is like the PET, the PETE, and two, which are safe to use with essential oils. You'll know if there's an incompatibility with your container, if it changes the color or the shape or begins to leak. This might take around 24 hours to occur. So you'll know, really, you'll know right away whether or not your bottle is going to work. When in doubt, use glass. Another available option would be to use a stainless steel container or uh, something that's not lined in any way, like with an epoxy. Um, usually that applies to aluminum. So, um, okay, then we have checking the labels. 
So at this point, you might have doubts or worries along these lines. There's really no way to ever remember which guideline applies to which oil, but don't worry about that because it's labeled on the bottle. So it will tell you supplementary facts here. Can you see that? Maybe you can see that a little bit. I can't tell what I'm showing you, but supplementary facts. Um, it will tell you the serving size. It tells you how many servings are in the container. By the way, there's about 250 drops in this bottle. <laughs> one serving is one drop. It'll tell you the amount per serving. So how much you're gonna get of copaiba resin in this is 60 milligrams. Um, it'll give you the percent, the daily value, and it will tell you whether it is for internal or dietary use. It will say for internal use, dilute one drop and four fluid ounces of liquid. So it will tell you for aromatic, topical, or dietary use. And it'll give you some directions on how to use them on our bottles. So there is no reason to go wrong with these because you have the directions very completely just written on the bottle. Um, let's see. If the oil is photosensitive, the label will tell you to avoid the UV rays for 12 hours after you apply the oil. So you can be safe with that as well. So you don't have to you know, post lists of what oils can be used when. You can just look on the bottle. The label's gonna tell you to avoid contact with the eyes, inner ears, and sensitive areas. It's gonna even advise you that you can dilute it with coconut oil. So don't remember, don't worry about remembering everything and don't stress that you're gonna be playing the guessing game. Say the label shows you everything. Okay, what if you're pregnant? I get this question a lot. So my daughter's pregnant, I'm pregnant, I wanna use these oils, I know they're supportive. But um, when you're pregnant, we have some special circumstances, right? So <clears throat> let's make just this first very obvious important statement. Please work with your physician closely during your pregnancy. During pregnancy, you have a lot of changes taking place in your body and you're growing another person. So your body is creating another body. So that's amazing and it's difficult and it's so beautiful. During this period, it's going to be especially important that you pay attention to your body. And remember once again, essential oils, um, less is often better than more. It's important to remember that during pregnancy, women are especially sensitive. Adapting the quantity or the application methods or dilution ratios might be necessary to accommodate the heightened sensitivities. If your body is ready to go into labor, you can use clary sage and myrrh to support the progression of the labor. These essential oils can assist if this process, um, also in this process, if your body's already prepared and labor has begun. Use it cautiously and with heavy dilution. After the baby's been born, some women experience a decrease in their breast milk supply when using peppermint or other blends that contain peppermint. So others are not always affected. So it will depend on your dilution. And you know the blends that contain peppermint include our massage blend, the Aromatouch digestive blend, the Digesen, the tension blend, past tense, our metabolic blend, which is our Slim and Sassy, and our encouraging blend, which is our motivation, um, our aromatic aromatherapy. I would say that wrong. Aromatherapy blend. And then, of course, our, our vitality pack, our lifelong vitality, also contains a little bit of peppermint. Um, did you know that you can attend an entire class on essential oils in pregnancy? I will have more details for that for you. If you're interested in a class on oils in pregnancy, comment below if you are on Facebook or send me a message to eomethod at icloud.com and let me know you're interested in having a class on oils in pregnancy. What about medications? Medications and essential oils, there's certain medications, we always get this question about grapefruit because people that are on statin medications are typically really sensitive to grapefruit fruit, right? There's certain chemistry that interacts with the metabolism of their medication. So doctors advise not to drink or eat grapefruit, but what about the oil? So the reason grapefruit is not recommended is because the protein speeds up the me metabolism of the medications, which alters the levels in your body, so it interferes. But essential oil of grapefruit does not have any protein in it. So it's not gonna alter your medications and it is safe for use. Essential oils are being continually studied to allow for further understanding of how they interact with the body and the pathways behind their physiological benefits. Although there's always more ways to learn, there's always one thing apparent. Essential oils have a long history of safety. In fact, um, when you're using oils congruently with your medications, there can, there's only been a minimal report um, 
minimal number of reports showing that essential oils cause significant interactions. So by far the best way to ensure a positive experience with the essential oils is to communicate openly with your physician regarding your intended use of the essential oils. Um, there's other medication guidelines. If you're gonna be under anesthesia or using barbiturates, you wanna avoid rosemary and eucalyptus. If you take anticoagulant drugs, asthmatics, or have aspirin allergies, avoid wintergreen and birch because those have similar compounds. If you have uh, high blood pressure or elevated blood pressure, use caution with rosemary and thyme. If you have been diagnosed with epilepsy, you should avoid uh, basil, rosemary, birch, and wintergreen. If you're diagnosed with renal or liver disease, compromised immune systems, or chemical sensitivities, or you're taking multiple medications, it's recommended that you start with very small amounts and very heavily diluted essential oils. Monitor your body really closely, starting with your blood pressure, your blood sugar, that type of thing. Also, for those that have been diagnosed with blood sugar issues, when you're using essential oil for metabolism or pancreatic support, you will want to monitor your blood sugar very closely so that you are aware of any drops that may be too low. Uh, and of course, as always, work with your physician very closely. Um, pets. There is a concern about what oils can I use with my pet, on my pet, or around my pet. Um, often, you know, pets, they're small, right? Most of them are small. <laughs> Maybe if you have a horse, it's not so small. But, you know, they, they often experience many body issues that are similar to ours. Um, they get colds and, and illness just like we do. Um, and essential oils are a great way to support their health. So here's some tips for using as oil, uh, essential oils safely with your furry pals. One, dilute it for topical use. Know your pet's health status. Do not use oils on or near the eyes, ears, nose, or genitals of your pet. Use a water diffuser for aromatic use and allow your pet to roam freely with an open door to the room. If they don't like it, they'll leave. Um, do not use oils topically on your pet if using a topical medication or a dermal patch. This includes topical flea or tick preventatives. And do not give any of the products containing xylitol, like toothpaste or beadlets, to your pet. Only use therapeutic grade essential oils um, and observe your pet's behavior. In the event of an adverse reaction, dilute with a carrier oil. Skin irritation is the most common and most severe reactions resolve within 24 to 48 hours after oil exposure. Discontinue the use of the oil if your pet shows signs of distress, drooling, squinting, rubbing their face, vocalization, shaking, vomiting, or diarrhea. Oils to avoid topically and internally with dogs are birch, melaleuca or tea tree, wintergreen, use with caution, hot oils like oregano, cassia, cinnamon, clove, rosemary, and thyme. Oils to avoid topically and internally with cats uh, include basil, citrus oils like bergamot, grapefruit, lemon lime, tangerine, birch, cinnamon, clove, dill, fennel, melaleuca, oregano, peppermint, thyme, rosemary, spearmint, and wintergreen. <laughs> kind of a lot. Um, the following is a great guideline for your pets. So one to two drops, two to four times a day with a carrier oil. So one teaspoon carrier oil to one um, drop of essential oil for cats and dogs that are small, like under 20 pounds. One teaspoon carrier oil to two to four drops of essential oil for dogs over 20 pounds. Um, I'll tell you one story. We, we have a rescue cat that we got a few years ago, and when we first brought him home, he was really sick. Um, I'm not sure what was wrong. He had respiratory infection. He had all kinds of, all kinds of issues going on with him. And um, one of the things that we did was we got a little roller bottle, and we treated him like an infant. And so we put in one couple drops of, of frankincense and lavender oil, and we with, and then filled it with coconut oil, and then we rubbed it on the bottom of his paws. That was it. And within a couple of days, his, his um, gunkiness was all cleared up, and he was a happy cat, and his coat got really healthy and shiny. And, you know, they say, when in doubt, use frankincense. So just saying, when in doubt. What about horses? Okay, safety with horses. There's a big difference in the size of a horse compared to the size of our household pets, right? Um, so here's some um, tips and safety for your big pets. Only use the therapeutic or medical grade essential oils. Know your horse's health status and the medications and supplements they're currently taking, if any. Do not use oils on or near the eyes, ears, nose, or genitals of your horse. 
Use caution with topical application of hot oils like the oregano, thyme, clove, cassia, cinnamon. Dilution is gonna be needed for those oils. Do not use water to dilute an essential oil that you've already applied. Rather, dilute the carrier oil like a vegetable or fractionated coconut oil. And then do not apply oils after bathing while the horse is still wet. If you've ever done that for yourself, for example, you just get out of the bathtub and then you put on deep blue rub. Okay, you need to wait until your skin like calms down from the bath <laughs> or gets back to normal normal, the pores are back to normal too, because your pores open when you're in the bath, right? So let the pores close. When the, the skin is wet, um, it invites uh, kind of like that water effect, you know, it, it, it makes it harsher. It's a harsher uh, experience. So, and it, it tingles, you know, stronger, that type of thing. Do not use essential oils at the same time as using another topical medication. So like the dermal patches, do not panic if your horse has an irritation or adverse reaction. Just dilute the area with a coconut uh, carrier oil. Most of those reactions resolve within a few hours after the dilution. Do not apply oils to the saddle area prior to riding. Caution should be used around animals that are pregnant, nursing, young, or on certain medications. And of course, to avoid during their pregnancy, Arbor Vitae, basil, birch, cassia, cinnamon, rosemary, thyme, and wintergreen. And then observe always your horse's behavior when you're applying essential oils. Um, it is important in the event of an adverse reaction to dilute with a carrier oil. The skin irritation is the most common and most reactions again will resolve within two, uh, one to two days after the oil exposure once you put that dilution in place. Okay, one quick question I get about storage of essential oils is the proper packaging. Um, Okay, so usually the glass bottles will be tinted amber. You can see these are the amber bottles. They're dark brown uh, or another darker shade that's to protect the essential oil from sunlight or other sources of UV radiation. But any glass container can work effectively. So it doesn't have to be a dark oil. Um, any plastic parts used with essential oils like the orifices or the lids, um, they should be from high quality plastics or like from the number one, the, the PETE or number two. This helps prevent erosion of the plastics that can occur with essential oils. And you don't want to, uh, you don't want your plastic melting into your essential oils. So keep them out of the sun. When uh, the label is applied, the bottle is stamped with a lot number and an expiration date. Any oil marked for internal use must also be marked with an expiration date to fulfill regulatory requirements. However, the very nature and the structure of essential oils makes them extremely stable. Shelf life testing performed on essential oils has been shown that essential oils maintain their efficacy even five to 10 years or more. We know this from even uh, the Egyptians in their pyramids, they would, they would uh, store essential oils uh, with the graves in the pyramids. And when the grave robbers would go, those oils would be there for centuries. And, uh, and they're still potent and they're still good. They are still worth more than gold, right? So we know that they have a very, very, very good shelf life. Um, usually we're talking about the citrus oils that, that might not last as long. Again, you wanna keep your bottle closed as often as possible um, to prevent any evaporation. Um, so here's some guidelines that can be implemented when you're storing your oils. So store them in a room temperature condition, avoid exposure to extreme temperatures. So don't leave your oils in the car during the summer. Don't leave them on the windowsills. Um, don't expose them to direct sunlight or other sources of UV rays. Prevent prolonged exposure to oxygen, which can create oxidation of the oil over time. So leaving the cap unscrewed, etc. Tightly secure the caps after each use. This prevents the oil from evaporating and decreasing the exposure to oxygen. And then of course, always keep them away from, a fl from hot flames, um, like your fireplace, right? Or something like that. Storing oils in excessive heat or light can change their properties dramatically. So to keep them in their most pure um, form that we receive them in, you want to learn to properly store them. All right, just a quick note on peppermint and eucalyptus with children. We've often heard to avoid these two oils with children, but really if with proper usage and dilution, um, you can use these every day with your kids in a safe and helpful way. Peppermint's main constituent is menthol, which can cause mild irritation, that's the tingly part. Um, it can be sensitive on the skin and should be diluted. Since menthol is a strong aroma, you might avoid using it near the face and eyes. Um, it is safe to use around young kids, but just, you know, be mindful of the ideal amounts that we discussed earlier. 
Um, massive amounts of peppermint can have adverse effects and possibly cause toxicity. So you don't need to use a lot. Like we always say, less is more. Try to start with one drop and go from there. Eucalyptus, um, its main constituent is this 1.8 cyanol. It can be applied topically and used aromatically, but it's one of the few oils that is not recommended for internal use. So with children or those with sensitive skin, moderate to heavy dilution is recommended. Um, if you review any of the scientific literature out there, you'll notice that the reports of serious adverse reactions associated with eucalyptus have always appeared when extremely large amounts um, have been taken internally or placed in, into the nose. That's like people who are drinking an entire bottle of essential oil. It's craziness. You should not be anywhere close to using an entire bottle. A couple of drops. There's 250 drops in here. So one to two drops at a time, you're good. Okay, so store your oils out of the reach of little children so they can't, you know, they can't ingest them accidentally. Teach your children to ask for help when they're applying and help your older children stay within their guidelines for, for the use. Um, and then keep the ideal guidelines in mind. You can use heavier dilution for younger children or those with sensitive skin. Um, if you have small fingers attached to little ones with exploring minds, <laughs> you might consider using the childproof caps that are available at aromatools.com. Okay, if you are not buying wholesale oils, you need to think about getting a wholesale membership. That's one of the things we love about our company. It works like a Sam's or a Costco membership. You pay a flat fee of $35 a month, I'm sorry, a year, not a month, for the year. And whenever you need an essential oil, you can order it right from your account um, and you get 25% discount. You can even qualify for more savings up to 35 and 55% discount as a member when you take advantage of some of their rewards programs. Um, besides the annual fee, there's only one requirement to keep your wholesale account. You have to purchase one item every year, no matter how big or small, to remain active. As a gift at the end of your first year of membership, when you renew your account, uh, you'll get charged $25, but you'll also get a free bottle of peppermint. So if you are planning on purchasing more than one oil for you or your family, then buying at wholesale is going to be your best option. Um, how to get the free products. Um, there's a rewards program in place that you can participate in if you would like to earn oils for free. When you purchase oils each month, you can earn up to 30% back in points used for free oils. Isn't that awesome? You can message me after the class to learn more about enrolling in this rewards program. But if you're anything like me and you want to get all the oils, but your pocketbook says you need to take it slower, then this might be the best option for you. And then of course our price per drop. This is one of my favorite things. It is amazingly inexpensive to use essential oils. We are talking cents on the dollar here. Uh, one drop can be anywhere from eight cents to 30 cents or 40 cents. Let's say you wanna use two drops of lavender essential oil. You only spent 16 cents. So it's pennies for each use. And I want to help you find the best oils for your needs. So don't feel like you're on your own. Now that the class is coming kind of to a close here. Message me and let me know if I can advise you on the best oils for your circumstances. That is what I'm here for. I have a cat meowing in the background. <laughs> um, so just a quick question. How much would your favorite oil cost per drop? I'm going to put, post a link here where you can look up what it, your favorite oil would cost per drop. So look for that in the comment section on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page, if you are um, watching the webinar version, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash EO method. You can go there and find our webinars. So let's just quickly, how do oils fit into your life? Um, after learning about oils and the natural health and wellness that they can offer you and your family, basically everyone you know, how do you see yourself using oils? Do you see yourself as just a consumer, someone who just uses oils for yourself and your family? Or are you excited about sharing oils with your friends or maybe even holding classes or just basically telling people about your experience? Or do you see yourself as somebody who wants an essential oils business like what I do? Um, I know you're here. I know you're here. <laughs> do you see yourself um, sharing with family, friends, and earning an income by um, blessing other people's lives with these essential oils? 
Um, I invite you to think about hosting your own class. You can do this on Facebook. We can do it live. That's something that I would help you with. Or the person that showed you uh, this webinar, they, this is something that they can help you put together. Um, it's fun to do things like this. If your family and friends would, uh, if you think they would like to learn more about essential oils and how they can help them in their everyday life, then consider hosting a class. You can earn some free oils that way. Um, let me know if you'd like to schedule that in the next few weeks or get with the person who uh, brought you to this webinar and get with them to schedule um, hosting a class. The great thing is um, if you do it online, you don't have to clean your house or fix refreshments or, or go through all that hosting um, uh, rigmarole, I guess, that, that sometimes can be uh, difficult to put together. So you don't even have to put makeup on if you don't want to. <laughs> okay. So have you fallen in love with your oils yet? Can you see the benefits that they bring to your family? Can you see the difference that it can make in somebody's life by just sharing the gift of essential oils? Maybe you want to teach classes as part of your ministry, or maybe you just want to earn a little bit of extra cash, or maybe it's just earning enough to pay for the products that you're buying every month. Um, this could be an opportunity for you. So think about um, possibly using these oils too make that difference. We do have a special offer for this class for, for being here, for just showing up for the month of July. doTERRA is offering a free copaiba oil and a free wild orange oil for enrolling uh, in, with a wholesale account. So all you have to do is buy your $35 membership fee, order 100 PV of oils, and you'll get a free copaiba and a free wild orange. Let me stop this share here. Now, why this is gonna to matter to you, or why are you gonna care about this? So copaiba, let me just tell you a little bit of the benefits of this. We know it's good for skincare. We know it's good for um, your, you know, help supporting your immune system. It has a, a amazing benefits, but one of the things it's known for is it's being compared to um, CBD oil. And CBD oil is kind of like on the trend right now. People are talking about how it's being useful. We're finally getting kind of like a legal form of, of uh, TH, what is that, THM um, oil or whatever. That, that's the, um, the non-hallucinogenic um, compound <laughs> with the marijuana or the hemp plant. So um, we're really lucky. Copaiba has similar benefits and it doesn't have any of those side effects. So um, people are turning now to copaiba oil for supporting some of those issues that are causing the aches and the pains and, and the systemic issues that are going on in their body. So if you have questions on how this could be useful for you, please message me and I will give you more specifics on what conditions this oil can be really useful for. Um, this, um, to me, this is, it is so popular of an oil. doTERRA is, they have to limit the amount that you can get. So it's only one per account right now. So we're really, really lucky that they're offering this as a free bonus for just enrolling with a wholesale account. Um, if you are in Europe, you're going to get this for free just by placing a 200 PV order. Any order it could be enrollment. It could be a loyalty order. It could be just a regular order. Uh, 200 PV or more, you're going to get this for free. And that's awesome because it's not available in Europe to order right now. So um, if you're in Europe and you're wanting this, get your 200 PV order in, get with the person that introduced you to this webinar and have them help you get this ordered. If you don't have somebody that's helping you, message me and I will make sure that you get helped. So again, if you're in the US or Canada, you're going to get Copaiba for free for a 100, oh, sorry, uh, Wild Orange for free for a 100 order, Copaiba for free for a 200 enrollment only order. So it is for a new membership uh, wholesale account with doTERRA for 200 PV or more. So again, get with the person that invited you to this webinar, or if you don't have somebody helping you, message me. I will make sure that somebody helps you. So that is it. So I want to thank you for sharing my time, sharing the time with me, going over the uh, dangers and precautions that we need to be aware of with essential oils and how we use them. I know this webinar was a little bit long, but it was really important information to get out there. So tag your friends, tag your family in this post so they can listen and learn about how to use their essential oils safely 
and message me any questions you have. And I will see you next Wednesday. We have essential oils and sleep. So we're going to be talking about how to maximize our sleep potential using uh, some of these certified, certified therapeutic grade essential oils. All right. Thank you so much. You guys have a great week.